Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D Master Quest. In this one, we're going to be taking on the bottom of the well, hands down one of the creepiest areas within the game. I remember when I first discovered this place as a kid, I was so terrified to do anything within it. I mean, not only is it so creepy from the music and the vibe it gives, but it's also littered with re-deads that can scream and freeze you in your place and whoa, the way Link froze. Kind of looked like he was trying to, you know, flex or something. That was kind of weird. Okay, let's go ahead and jump and attack this guy before he jumps at me. Oh, okay. Well, now he's sucking my life. And as you can see, he does a heart every second, which is not good. But I want to kill that thing because I want to check out this skeleton here. So, what does Navi have to say? I can hear the spirits whispering in this room. Look for the Eye of Truth. That's what they're saying. Uh, okay. So, I guess we got to look for the Eye of Truth and hopefully not end up like this guy. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a really cool temple. I love how they incorporated Young Link within it because while the Shadow Temple is the upcoming temple for Adult Link, we gotta first kind of navigate through a shorter version of the temple to find an item that will we are pretty much utilized within the Shadow Temple and that will be very helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I want to say that the Master Quest version is... Uh, a bit more difficult than the normal version, which shouldn't be of a surprise, but as I've been saying for almost every other temple, this, um, you know, the usually the Master Quest version is a lot easier, and the only difficult part is finding the gold Skultulas. This, I want to say it's difficult all around, because it's such a small temple, and Nintendo did a really good job kind of changing things around. I remember the first time I took this on, I was extremely confused, because I was so set on how it was made in the original version that I, I just couldn't solve the puzzles but uh, eventually I got it. I feel like it took me like a good 30 minutes to do this but it shouldn't take us more than 20 or so we'll see I mean that's with collecting everything just finding the lens of truth for the first time took me like 30 minutes because I was so lost but should be pretty straightforward and easy what we want to do is something similar to what we've done in the original game and that is play Zelda's lullaby here but first we actually want to hit the switch I like how he's physically holding it it's kind of cool and now we can play Zelda's lullaby normally you would have played it to uh, stop the water flow but but just by hitting the switch that stops it for you and now we can play Zelda's lullaby right here to open up the gates behind us so that way we can enter like the main center room I believe here we'll actually have a uh, yep a shadow from the you know ceiling come for us it's gonna be a wall master I believe and I don't want to mess with them because if they do if the shadow lands on you they'll actually pull you up and drag you to the beginning of the temple which is definitely no fun so I'm gonna go ahead and wait for it to start coming down as you can see we just gotta quickly move out of its way and now we can fight it go ahead and die I, I don't know how many hits it takes maybe one more perfect okay let's go ahead and now just leave it and we kind of walk around. I believe we don't want to step in the center here because if we do, we might get tricked. I mean, obviously, there's a lens we need to find, and this lens is going to let us see uh, platforms that we can't see and also see fake platforms that aren't really platforms. Like here, this is a, there's a walking way, but we can easily tell where we need to walk thanks to these jars that are placed perfectly uh, towards the side so you literally just want to hug the wall and kind of make your way back if you do end up falling it is no good because you're going to end up in like the basement like area of the temple and it sucks trying to make your way back up but I don't know why this doesn't really look like the Skyrim logo but I can't help but think of it um, and that's only the textures for the walls, uh, like certain doors, I mean, within the temple. But okay, so we got ourselves a small key, not bad. Now, I believe the eye switch we hit earlier, all it really did was give us this. Nothing, um, too special, but it's there, and it's gone. Really? Okay, I, I, I guess that's what I get for calling that fairy nothing too special, but whatever. Okay, now that we have that small key, we got the dungeon map, we want to go ahead and jump down here after uh, hitting the switch on that fountain hand thing. That way, uh, there is no water within areas like this, and we can enter these weird uh, crawl spaces that will allow us to access new rooms within the temple. Again, from far away, I just can't help but think of the Skyrim logo. I have no idea why. It's supposed to be, like, based off of a dragon-type thing, but I don't know. Anyways, oh, jeez, wait, wait, it spawned right by, no, 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 jump back. Oh, my God, okay. So, yeah, this, my friends, is known as Dead Hand. It has infinite arms, and it will bite you if it comes near you. It will actually use its hands that grow out of the ground to try to bite you. So, you want to go ahead and make sure you deal with it as soon as possible, because... 
It's a scary looking fellow. Hands down one of the creepiest looking enemies within the game. <laughs> like, jeez. Okay, no, no, no. And it has like these hands that like leave Link helpless. Get away. Okay, so we're away. I actually want to kind of stare at it when it uh, brings its head down. It does a good amount of damage, but I just want to see its face. Whoa, what a creepy looking enemy. Jeez, okay. Now let's go ahead and wait for it to bring its head back down. And then we're going to hit it as much as we can. Take that. I like how he actually doesn't have full-on hands, like, um, they kind of look really weird, and then his actual hands are <laughs> these. So you want to actually get grabbed by them so you can bait him out, and then quickly just jump out of it, and then go ahead and deal as many strikes as you can to his face until you kill him. Pretty easy enemy, just really creepy. That's probably the only thing that puts me on edge. It's just like, I gotta get away, this is too terrifying. So where are you? Okay, this should hopefully be the last set of attacks. We're gonna go in and wait, and bam! Oh, literally, last attack, exactly. And boom, he falls with a very unsettling death animation. Like, kind of limping still, almost. Um, as his body just rests there and fades away. So, yeah, now you're actually a dead hand. Get it? Because his name is Dead Hand, and now he's dead. Uh, now, now you have dead hands. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just shut up. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. Whatever. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and pick up whatever's inside this chest. Sadly, it's not gonna be the item we're looking for, but it's the compass, which is good enough. And uh, before we even consider leaving this room, there's something very important we want to do. That is, place a bomb by this rubble here because we can actually explode it, and there's a small key hidden underneath. Now we have two small keys that we have yet to use. One small key is going to be to progress within the temple, which is necessary, but the other one will actually be for a Skulltala, so it's a good thing we have both, but I'm pretty sure we're now good to go. We don't really have to worry about, uh, like, much else now. So, let's go ahead and, um, make our way out of here with said two small keys, and I hate how you can just hear those re-deads in the background. It is very unsettling. Like, uh, I'm not, trust me, I'm, you know, I'm not afraid of this place now, you know, it's just a video game, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, okay, I'm not afraid at all, I want to say. I'm trying to convince myself that. Um, but alright, let's go ahead and make our way here. So, from where the fountain was, uh, to the far left is a little crawl space that we can enter through like this. And this actually should be where we're going to need to use one of our small keys. But, uh, actually, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. Okay, so while the door looks locked here, uh, there is a little thing going on with this little face here. Yeah, you want to hit it, um, real quickly because there's a switch hiding within it. And, okay, cool, there are shadows that will fall from the ceiling. I don't really care. Let's just go ahead and enter here and escape. And then, now we're in this room where there are a bunch of Skeletalas that we can easily just throw a bomb at, explode, and press this switch, which will actually give us access to the item of the dungeon. So there we go, we're pretty much done. Now, if you know what to do, this is a lot faster, I want to say, than the original version of the game, but I, I have to say solving or like, you know, kind of solving this for the first time might be a bit difficult for some people. At least, like I said, for me, it had me, you know, scratching my head a bit, but um, this was like the only area within the game that truly kind of confused me. But okay, now with that switch pressed in, it, it's mainly because I didn't think how important Skulltalos were. I thought every room had a significance, but they don't. Because we're, we're pretty much done now. By falling into that center thing, we can go ahead and do this and... Oh, jeez! Wait, 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 they, the, 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 uh, the hand can... Link, move. No, 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 no! Okay, phew. Oh, that terrified me so much. Phew. I thought, like, the game wasn't gonna let me move. But yes, by hitting that switch, we now can make our way through here. And, oh my, okay, I'm gonna kill this guy. He shouldn't- No! Okay, that's not that big of a deal. Holy crap, that terrified me. <laughs> like, a freaking boulder rolled perfectly as it was gonna land on me to prevent me from- leaving the shadows tracks wow that was, that was amazing okay i'm gonna go ahead and ignore this guy i'm just gonna i guess freeze real quickly as i walk around luckily i can just jump immediately down so there's not much i have to re-navigate through thankfully so let's go ahead and drop down and before we do anything i gotta kill this thing so show your face 
All right, the hand is slowly coming down. I'm gonna go ahead and start running. Hopefully no boulder appears out of nowhere. All right, let's go ahead and just jump attack it twice and just like that, whoa! Okay, it's dead, it dropped a lot of rupees, cool, okay. So the, where the chest appeared when we originally hit the switch was right here near this blue fire. We just need to follow its pathway. And uh -oh, okay, we got a, you know, group of redeads just chilling. I don't want to mess with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play. The Sun Song to paralyze him in place and pick up the chest we came here for. I like how this bottom area actually looks almost like a hand. Well, it's missing a finger, but close enough. And well, just like that, you got the lens of truth. Yes, this is the item we came into this temple for, and now we're good to go. We can leave this place if we so desire, because we can use it anywhere. So, hmm, what could this be? It looks like a lens. Uh, I wonder if this lets you see things better. Really, Navi? I wondered that too. Uh, anyway, this place is dank and creepy. Let's get out of here. So yeah, Navi doesn't want to be here any longer. I can't blame her one bit, but we have yet to collect the three gold skull flaws. So now that we have the lens, we'll be able to find them with ease. The first one is actually going to be uh, located here. Now, you don't even need the lens of truth if you just kind of make your way around like this and paralyze each one. Uh, but I guess I should show it off because why not? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and swap one of my items. There we go. So yeah, they're literally just skull flaws on the wall, and they're blocking their golden brother in the gold skull Yeah, I got you. Too bad you guys couldn't do crap about it. Now let's just go ahead and walk around again, just by paralyzing them. I could have killed them, but since they take two hits, I feel like this was a bit faster since the boomerang just kind of immediately paralyzes them and I don't have to wait for them to slowly turn uh, around several times until they fall and collapse. So, alright, one Skulltula down. We have a small key still with us that will help us for another one of the Skulltulas and then the final one will be with the Lens of Truth. So we're gonna easily be able to escape from this dungeon now uh, once we collect everything. So okay, this room just kind of immediately locks. I wonder what this thing is saying. I can hear it whispering. Okay, so look. Okay, same thing. Well, I have it, buddy. So, yeah. Um, all right. So now what I want to do is I want to make my way back into where the uh, center room was, which should be over here. And there should be two areas we have yet to explore, which not here, the opposite side. So um, we explored all of this wing, but I believe we have yet to truly explore this area here so there are two things we want to quickly get one is within here i'm going to go ahead and open up this door and there should be a bunch of whoa what are you are you okay very fair a bunch of invisible enemies um i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can what no no no, no. okay let's chill um okay let's uh let's chill here that was not that was not nice what happened the second i got in here i just got destroyed but okay perfect all right, nope, nope, just play it safe. All right, let's just wait for this thing to change its direction. Okay, we killed one, that's all we need to kill. I'm just gonna kill this key so it didn't come towards me. Come on, die. There you go. All right, I don't really care for this skull to lot right here because I'm here for the golden one, and that is right over here. I can't really see it properly, but if I keep hitting it underneath this tombstone, voila, we got it, and now we can go ahead and leave. I don't want to mess with these invisible enemies. Um, but alright, so now the final gold skull. So this is where we needed the small key. Because it's in this locked door. And this room, it's so just dumb because... There's nothing to do in this room besides get the gold skull, but they set it up like a maze. And now, oh, okay, well, Gibdo, not something I want to mess with. But, yeah, like, they're not a maze, but, like, these torches you want to light, you know, you can open up these if you push a uh, tombstone, which I forgot how to... Can you actually? Oh, no, it's lighting up. The torch will push over the tombstone, which I could show off. I guess I will really quickly, but then I'm going to leave immediately after. So, because we're not going to, you know, I don't really want to show off anything else here, I'll be honest. So, I'm going to go ahead and just pull out my uh, stick. And just like that, yeah, th this is as essentially what I kept doing uh, in every room. And it was completely pointless. <laughs> Look at that gift. It just rises out. Oh, okay, screw this. I'm leaving. Um, so... Yeah, uh, the temple's done. We can easily just, uh, get out of the bottom of the well and leave, but I feel like that would take more time, so let's just teleport out of here, right? Why not? 
that's a much easier way to deal with things. You should teleport out of the chaos. Uh, it wouldn't have been too long to just leave the temple, or you could just place Pharaoh's Wind, but I actually want to make my way to the Temple of Time, because one thing, now that we have the Lens of Truth, we need to turn back into adult and get ready to take on the Shadow Temple, but the other thing, with the Lens of Truth, and since I am missing a good amount of hearts from that temple, I can easily get myself another heart container that will help me out, or I guess a piece of heart, I don't know if it will fulfill a heart container, we can easily check, no, not even close. Um, so never mind. But okay, it's the daytime or about to turn night. I can't tell. I like how you can hear, whoa. You can hear the commotion when the music stops. That's really cool. Like from the crowd and stuff. But yeah, I, I couldn't tell if it was just turning nighttime or just about day. One or the other, I don't care because I want it to be fully nighttime. So that way we can enter this. Is there a way we can check? The shop? No, we can't. Okay, whatever. Let's just enter it. So this is a treasure chest mini game that only is open at nighttime, and I just need to take a second to appreciate again the like the time they took to make a you know whole area that you only see from one angle, and that's meant to like you really play through once once you have the lens of truth. So yeah, it's really cool to see like the gold and everything, and then this dude uh, just chilling. So yeah, open a chest and surprise! If you get a key, you'll be able to advance. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So we get our first small key for ten rupees, and now the gambling ensues. Yes, it's pretty much like a mini gambling mini game. You gotta choose, but since we can cheat the system with the lens of truth, we're able just to pick whatever we want. Now, I don't know why Nintendo did this, but they put like a different colored wallpaper in every room and actually like took the time to put a ceiling, which you never even see. And I don't know, I just find that really cool how like there's so much detail and kind of want to like look at every room thoroughly like this because it's just nice to see the remake. It's only because I'm so used to the original one, but yeah, here's like a green looking wallpaper. Uh, let's go to not open a chest. Let's first figure out which one we want to open up. So, all right, there we go. We got another door key. Let's advance onwards. This must be super satisfying for those who like doing that. But again, it's blue now, letting you know that you're getting a bit further. And I guess that color signifies the blue rupee as well. Let's go ahead and open this up, though, and get ourselves another door key. <laughs> And uh, I wonder how many, I think maybe there's two more after this, but yeah, this is a bit different. I believe this is where the purple rupee is going to be. Or no, still blue. That's why it has like purple and blue vibes. They don't want to give you a very special reward yet. You got to advance even further. So I want to say that this room, the red room, which has really cool uh, wallpaper, is a red rupee. Yeah, okay. And just like that, we got ourselves... Hopefully this final small key, or is there really one more room? Okay, this is it. Yep, there we go. So I guess you don't get a purple rupee throughout this mini game. You're barely going to make double the money if you don't reach this chest because the prizes suck. But yeah, the final room is made of pure gold. Like, I love the build-up to it. Like, how, there you go. This is the final room. A completely golden room. And we can easily see what's inside of it. I mean, it's not like it matters because there's only one chest for the winner. And that is, yes, the piece of heart. <laughs> Link has to open it all epic-like. But we know exactly what's in it. And voila, we got it. Winner! So you got the piece of heart. Nice. And it fills up our uh, heart meter, and now we're good to go. So, sadly, we can't use our ocarina here. I feel like this is going to take us a while to now exit because you have to literally walk through every single room once again. It's There's no teleportation thing, or the game is just like cut to where Link is already standing out. I feel like that would have worked as well, but it's cool that they let you advance back through all the rooms so you can see how far you've gotten, especially if you did it, you know, with pure luck but yeah so great you're a real gambler thanks man i didn't really gamble anything i knew exactly what i was doing but i appreciate it anywho let's go ahead and now become an adult so that way we can take on the shadow temple i feel like nothing is really holding us back now we got the lens of truth you know we are now set to go so we're gonna go ahead and run straight to the master sword pull it back up and just play the nocturne of shadow to attempt to make our way to the temple itself and take it on. Uh, of course, there is going to be an actual item within the Shadow Temple. One of my favorite items actually within the game. I can't wait to obtain it. It's such a cool concept of an item. 
Um, and it's something you wouldn't expect to be in the temple. Like, you would have totally expected the Lens of Truth to be the uh, item of the temple. But nope, Young Link had to get it, so that way we can utilize it in the temple and find something else, which I'm more excited to use. But, alright. Fast forwarding time. I love that little animation. Every time I do this, it's just so satisfying. Some, like, you know, people always complain about that it should always be skippable cutscenes. That's one that never needs to happen because it's just very short and uh, sweet. But, okay. Also these. I love having to play music to teleport around. I wish they'd bring this in another Zelda game. Like, Wind Waker had the baton, but, like, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask did it best. It was all about the actual notes you played, um, and, like, the songs you learned. And all the songs are so good. Like, come on. The Nocturne of Shadow, such an amazing song. Every song we've learned, so good. Um, let me actually know which one is your favorite in the comments. I'm kind of curious. I, mine is the last one we have yet to learn for the final temple. So I'll get more into that when the time comes. But anywho, here we are where the Shadow Temple lies. But as you can see, the door is sealed shut. It has the Sheikah eye symbol signifying, you know, that this is a Sheikah's territory. They, obviously, Impa's the one that entered it. She is a Sheikah, and she's the one attempting to seal the Shadow once again. Really cool how it looks all together. But... The way we open it up, yes, there's a bunch of torches. You can only imagine what we need to do. And that is, well, shoot everyone down with fire arrows. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, that would take way too much time. <gasps> what we need to do, obviously, and we've done this one too many times, is use Din's fire to, you know, easily ignite the entire place. And just like that, the door slowly opens. Uh, I actually love the way it slowly opens like that. I just want to kind of stare at it very slowly. Look at it. And voila, it is ready. So, now the Shadow Temple awaits. I'm not going to lie, this entrance is so epic. It makes you really hyped for the temple itself. So, if you guys are excited for it, next time we're going to be taking on the Shadow Temple and seeing the truth with the lens of truth. I'll see you all then. Let's go.